Hi there, my name is Brendan and I am a Solutions Engineer here at D2L. In the next three or four minutes, we'll cover how to use Google Meet within Brightspace to engage with students in hybrid, remote, and virtual learning environments. For this demonstration, we are logged in as Tammy Teacher, who is a middle school teacher in Brightspace. That said, the workflow will be the same for elementary and high school teachers. Over the last year, Tammy's students have gotten really comfortable with Google Meet so she'd love to keep their video conferencing experience consistent in Brightspace. Luckily for her, she can schedule and host Google Meet sessions for her students all within Brightspace. To showcase this, I'm going to take advantage of Brightspace's Google Meet integration and the activity feed, a communication and engagement window, pardon me, on her course's homepage. You can think of the activity feed as Brightspace's social stream. As the teacher, Tammy can easily post messages for her students, and she can even allow them to comment on her posts or author posts of their own. The activity feed is a great way to embed a social-emotional check-in to your lessons, or in this case, to help students prepare for a Google Meet conversation by sharing resources or encouraging questions in advance. This strategy will give Tammy a sense of what types of questions her students might have, helping her to better address them during the meet. If Tammy were to take it one step further, she could create an opportunity for student-centered learning by posing a question in the activity feed to see what inquiry paths her students are interested in pursuing. Based on their comments, she can plan an engaging Google Meet session. Let's look at what this could look like. To create a post, she'll click Create Post and enter a quick message, taking advantage of a few word processing options. We'll pop our message in there, we'll get rid of that. and one of those word processing options we'll use is inserting an emoji just like that. Once she's entered her message, she'll add or attach a Google Meet to the post. She'll click on the attach icon at the bottom left and from the various options, select attach a link to an existing activity. In this window, she's able to insert quick links to existing course materials or third party uh, integrations. She'll scroll down and select the Google Meet quick link from the third party category to schedule the Google Meet. I'll point out here that this Quick Link integration allows you to create and insert Google Meet sessions in all places where Quick Links are supported in Brightspace, such as, of course, activity feed, but also announcements, calendar, content, discussions, and more. Now that she's entered her message and attached her Google Meet link, she's ready to post and share it with her class. But before she does, you'll notice she has the option to post later, enabling her to specify the date and time this post will appear for her students. Using this feature, she can create posts ahead of time and schedule their release, providing a more convenient and organized communication experience. This also means that when Tammy is planning out her week, she can make a few lessons in advance and have them ready to go. If she needs to edit them before posting, perhaps because the class is moving at a different pace than expected, she can. Once posted, her message and Google Meet link are available to her class. By clicking on the link, her students have direct access to the secure meeting without needing to sign in. Tammy can also pin posts to the top of the feed, enabling her to keep featured or high traffic posts spotlighted in her course for easy access for both her and her students. After all, she wants to let them know where to go. And that about covers the experience of using Google Meet in Brightspace's activity feed. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your D2L team. Thanks so much for watching.